Music sensation Craig David had been performing in Tenerife when the Club Deportivo Tenerife president Miguel Concepcion found him after a gig as he was inspired by Craig's work and was going to move into the garage scene. In return for his help in breaking into the top 10 of the charts, he said Craig could become club president of CD Tenerife. He told Craig he would become essentially king on the island if he could return the club to the top flight of Spanish football. Craig saw this as a no-brainer as he loves Tenerife that much that if he was able to not only reach the top flight but win it, he would become a hero on the island, then have the chance to rename Tenerife Eleven Tenerife. So he jumped at the chance to move into the business of owning a football club. Soon after his appointment as president of Club Deportivo Tenerife, he decided to remove current manager Jose Luis Mate out of his position and approached relative unknown and up-and-coming English manager GWFM to become the manager of Club Deportivo Tenerife. They had previously met on a four-day booze cruise and following excessive conversations about their love for booze, music, football and peregrine falcons created a formidable friendship. GWFM accepted the position as manager and in the press conference agreed with Craig David's promise to bring Tenerife to the summit of Spanish football, to top all the likes of Real Madrid and Barcelona and to win the Spanish La Liga within the next five years. When I say Bo, you say La Liga. Bo. La Liga. <laughs> Welcome finally to my new series, When I Say Bo, You Say La Liga. And yeah, as you noticed, or if you haven't noticed already, we are playing this Tenerife, Club Deportivo Tenerife. So, one thing to say is we're actually starting at the beginning of 2017-18 season. I've used the updated database, so all the players that were there at the beginning of the game, they're all still there. Um, ironically, for our team, they didn't seem to make any transfers. I made one or two. Uh, I'll get into transfers that I've made otherwise, but basically the only thing was there were a couple of like uh, players that come in like youngsters um, Otherwise no one left so all the transfer business that's happened this season is all that's happened like in terms of outs So um, I'm pretty pleased with that the other teams. It's not been the case some players are at the respective clubs I've actually only done uh, the Liga Santander and the La Liga 1-2-3 uh, This is uh, that's what I've done. I made sure the right teams got relegated and, and the right teams got promoted out of the divisions below um, as well which was an absolute nightmare but it took a lot of time which is why it's taken a little bit of time releasing it uh, releasing this series other things to mention if we look at the club we've got a new shirt sponsor because if you haven't noticed already Craig David is actually the chairman and uh, the new sponsor is both set to records um, to tie in obviously with the fact that he bought the club uh, that's it. he's got a sponsor in as well and, and speaking of the man himself here we are with uh, Craig David the president of CD Tenerife uh, yeah there he is in all his glory if you are wondering exactly uh, how I managed to get this job and how it came about uh, the press were on the streets and they managed to bump into Craig David here's what he had to say about the club on Monday Approach EW on the Tuesday, he mulled it over on the Wednesday, and on the Thursday and Friday and Saturday, signed on Sunday, and it were proper bow, I tell thee. So yeah, that's that's how it happened, really. Um, so before we go any further, I'm just going to tell you who we've been bringing in, uh, and who we've been letting go, and it's all been freebies, we didn't have a lot of money, I think we had about 50 grand or something like that to spend, if I remember rightly. Did sell one player, Inake, I think he actually joined in real life this particular season, uh, so, but... They came in with some money, we were struggling a bit financially. I had to bite the hand off, really. All these guys left on a free because wages were like, we were spending about 13 grand over. So I had to let a lot of people go. Otherwise, we brought in Ertzi Iriondo. Um, decent player, 22 years old. Not amazing, but don't forget what level we're at. Uh, I'd say it's probably on a par, I want to say, with top end League One. That's, that's, that's my feeling. Uh, but he can play complete win back, which is how we're going to be playing. I'll show you that later on. Uh, we also signed Juan Camara, who uh, basically he got released from Barcelona. Uh, so I, I, I just saw the opportunity to pick up a, a decent freebie and got him to play on the left hand side. Uh, so it's a decent option, 1.2 million valuation already. Uh, Raldi Thomas, uh, decent freebie coming in from Real Mercia. Um, 
looks very handy to be fair. He's not the best in terms of physicals, he's quick of, of course, but everything else is average. Uh, and mentally, some of his mental game could be improved, but I think his technicals are pretty good for this level, so that's why I decided to take a punt on him. And then finally we signed Sam Hart, an English left-back release from Liverpool. I think it was Liverpool, he originally started at Manchester United. Again, he's, he's mainly just back up, he's got a bit of potential, but we'll have to wait and see. We have completely rebuilt all the the um, the training staff and everything like that. There's no real major names, I've just tried to get the best I could. There's no outstanding people at all really, so I'm not going to go too much in depth on that side. Uh, but yeah, otherwise it was just inaccurate we let go uh, of any real quality, as you can see there. Probably on a par, roughly, with uh, Iriondo. So I thought, if I sell him, I can sign the other guy on a free. And it's pretty pretty much like a straight swap. Uh, just making some money. So then the only other thing to mention is the pre-season games. And of course, obviously the Spanish League, I say obviously, I didn't realise this. But it's a little bit behind. Um, and the reason why you, you, know, you can start in, I think you can start in 2017, 18 season in England. With all everything's happened, every, everyone's like finished the season. The Spanish league doesn't finish until uh, uh, June, and the actual the latest you can start the game with the actual database that's been added um, is the 31st of May. So there's still one game to play. Hence why I had to do it the way that I have to get to this particular starting date. So it has been a bit of a pain, um, but yes, otherwise friendlies. All right, yeah, five one against your B team. You'd expect that anyway. West Brom, they were like in the in the middle of all their friendlies, so they had a hell of a lot more fitness. A lot of our players were like on 70, 80 at best uh, fitness for probably these first four games before it started to improve. Uh, but yeah, then we had Las Palmas Athlet Atletico, which is like I think the B team of Las Palmas beat them 2-0. Uh, a lot of these games should have been higher score lines, like, but it, 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 it doesn't really matter, does it? Deportivo La Coruña, we lost 2-1, which I didn't think was that bad. Then we played a couple of like. Uh, what I consider a lesser team. Castillo, we beat them 9-0. Uh, very straightforward results. Uh, C.E. Le Hospitalet. I'm going to struggle with these names, uh, so I do apologise. We beat them 3-2. Um, then Tegeste, I want to say, we beat them 5-1. Levante, I know them, 3-2. Uh, Ian Hart left the, uh, to go there. Um, and then C.D. Eldense, we beat them 4-1. And then finish up with a 4-0 defeat against Real Madrid, which yeah, it's Real Madrid at the end of the day. Interestingly, interestingly enough though, Steven Nzonzi is deemed good enough to play for Real Madrid and I'm pretty sure he struggled like crazy at, at Stoke. So alright, yeah. He can't do it he can't do it at Stoke on a cold white night cold white Tuesday night in Stoke, Stoke but he can do it at Real Madrid as he scored past us when we were 2 0 down after th four, uh, three minutes. So today we have a game against Real Zaragoza, who used to be in the in the uh, La Liga just like uh, we were, but they've had a lot more like periods of time in the top flight whereas we haven't uh, looking at our history uh, where are we club we have spent like I say we've yo-yoed quite a bit but not overly we even dropped into the B tier the 2B the league of 2B I'm not entirely sure how it works why is it's a bit of a funny thing the the uh, there's four divisions that are all basically on the par different sections I'm guessing of the country and the top with the winners are going to a playoff so whoever wins those playoffs automatically get promoted. And then you've got the two that lost, they go into another playoff where the second, third and fourth teams, whoever wins them, play against them to see who goes into into the into the, the um the top well, into the promotion, basically. It goes up. And it's just like it was just so confusing and it took us ages to sort it out. But anyway, I digress, I I'm going off off point again. The actual history of the club, uh, they've actually got two second uh, division B1 um, wins, which is obviously the third tier, and uh, third division group two. So they haven't won anything as such. Um, hopefully we're going to we're going to change that. The idea is five-year plan, get into the um, La Liga San Santander and take it from there. Hopefully we can get as high as possible. Um, you know, the, the idea is to try and win the league within the five years. It's going to be a major ask, obviously, with the likes of Real Madrid and Barcelona and Atletico Madrid at the top, but we'll have to wait and see. Anyway, let's have a quick look at the team before we look at the tactics. We've got Danny Hernandez here. He's like probably the number one keeper, even though he's got number 25. 31-year-old um, Venezuelan. 
it's not bad. It's not amazing, but it's not bad. Reflex is decent at 15. One on ones could be better at 13, uh, but otherwise it's, it's pretty solid. Next is Carl Sabad. I'm going to highlight just the major players, I think. Uh, this guy's got a lot of potential, maybe four and a half star potential. Did have a bid, bid coming for him for £2 million plus a couple of add-ons. I turned it down just because I thought in a five-year plan, the other guys are going to get old and he's going to decline and I'm going to have to get rid. So I thought what would be best is to keep this guy, if we, kept, if we could, uh, put a bit of a beastier like, minimum fee release clause on. Um, and yeah, ho hopefully he'll be here 27 years of age. Next, uh, I'm gonna like I said, I'm just gonna look at the best players. Lucas Alvedano. Look at other players as we go on. Um, three and a half star player for this league. Not bad at all. Not the quickest. Um, had a bit of an injury recently, hence why he's dropped it in his physicals a little bit. But he's also 32 as well, so he's gonna be on the decline. So maybe one good good season from him. Um, hopefully, it will see us with a, a decent chance of promotion. Um, next is George. He's our best player and. Um, one of the most promising sounds of things and you can kind of see why physically he's not amazing yet he's, he's good in the in the key areas uh, but the acceleration and agility and balance is pretty poor uh, natural fitness of course as well um, but otherwise technically and mentally I don't think he's bad for 20 year old he's only going to improve shame I can't tutor him because he's actually down as a key player before I even started which is a bit of a pain in the dick and next we're going to move on to our centre midfield trio of decent players because I mean this is the worst one of the three uh, it's called Alberto, of course. He's going to be playing as a ball-winning midfielder for us as a backup, basically. He's training to do that as well. Uh, he's just well-rounded without being spectacular. Decent backup option uh, should the other players get injured or just too tired. Next up is Vitolo, 33-year-old Spaniard. Um, very good in like the mental aspect and decent at the tackling and marking side of a ball winning midfielder physicals are going to start to decline i do like his personality being resolute and he's definitely going to be a key player in this season i feel and the other guy is eta sans i want to say his name is um again very similar to vitolo very solid attribute especially mentally um, and physicals are starting to decline again a resolute midfielder which is very handy indeed uh, a little bit better probably in the technical sense, not as good in the tackling and marking, but he's going to be a, a more than adequate central, central midfielder slash box to box. Then we're going to have a look at the captain, which uh, it was already the captain and I didn't want to risk the, the harmony because the other two players you just saw previous are clearly better for being a leader, um, but I have to, I have to choose uh, Sands as the vice captain. But a 32 year old winger here has uh, been, is basically one of the favoured personnel of all the club like is like, I think he's an icon or something like that or maybe just favoured personnel but uh, he started off in t at Tenerife and ended up coming back like uh, about s five years ago so he's like a, a returner of prodigal, a prodigal son is that the right way to say it? I think so decent inside forward option I think uh, mainly for the left hand side if I can train him up but obviously age is against him next is Juan Villa uh, decent all-round player in my opinion. Obviously, he's not really tackle a bit. That's not what he's there for. Uh, he can play up front as a complete forward, which is a good backup op option from him. But he can, uh, can also play on the wing as well, and he's decent at being an inside forward. Um, so, yeah, very good mentally. I'm happy with this player in particular. And then finally, we'll just have a look at. Well, we'll have a look at the youngster afterwards, as best youngster. But um, this is Victor Casadeus. Casadesis, I think. I, I'm not entirely sure how you pronounce it. Uh, 32 against. So it's quite an old squad. There's going to be a lot of rebuilding. I'm hoping they can do it this one year and see what happens. But he's a complete forward and plays it naturally as well, which is fantastic. But uh, obviously, I wouldn't expect some uh, declining attributes at some stage. And then finally, we've got uh, Aldofo Gutierrez. He's our best uh, young prospect. Needs a lot of work, especially in the uh, in like work rate and things like that. But he's a, got a professional personality, which is, by all accounts, really key. Uh, I'd check out Troy um, FM Life's like tutorials on like the training things. He's doing like one to do with uh, Angel Gomez at Manchester United at the minute. It's really, really handy, really in depth. I definitely say check it out. Right, so before we get into this game, uh, just going to quickly highlight the manager of Real Zaragoza, uh, Sergio Pienas is the manager. Um, a decent coach. Um, I wouldn't say he's amazing. The tactical knowledge of 11, you know, it's not that good in my opinion. The captain and key player is actually Alberto Zapata, but to look at him, he looks very similar to Vitolo. Maybe a little bit better, a couple of areas, like first touch, but uh, 
yeah, model professional as well, which is kind of like the best thing you can probably get. So yeah, he's definitely someone you'd have in your team tutoring, without a doubt. So the team that is going to be playing the first game of the season is going to be Hernandez in goal, uh, with Perez at right back, Iriondo at left back, with Alberto and George, the centre back pairing, Alberto having to cover because of his injuries, and this reason, which I'm not entirely sure why, Kevin would not let me register. If I go to squad and go to registration, it will not let me do anything about him. So I'm going to be sending him out on loan, which is a pain in the dick, because it won't let me do anything. So that might be a fault in the game. I'm not entirely sure. He's 18 years old. He's a hot prospect. He's got 650 quid a week, so I would imagine it's a proper contract. Don't understand it. He's not amazing, don't get me wrong. I mean, look at his attributes, but he's got a bit of potential. And I might have been able to utilise him in these early stages, because of the, in the early stages, so to say. Because we've got injuries to uh, Carlos or Ruiz, who's shit slow anyway but uh, and on the decline 34 year old set the back of course but yeah it's a bit of a, a bit of a pain in the ass but yeah moving on we've got Vitolo and Sanz in the middle of the park uh, Souza on the left with Tyrone Ty have a quick look at Tyrone because he's starting not a bad player not deemed that much and he's on a lot of money so I'm giving him one chance to, to prove to me it's worth it but he's, he's quite a, he's a flair player he's pretty good in that, in that regard and then we've got De Thomas and Casadeus or Ca Casad this, this is, I might end up changing his name to Casadeus or Amadeus, rock me Amadeus. Um, yeah, anyway, let's stop talking, G, get into the game. Let, let's do it. Today's game is brought to you live from the Estadio Helidor Rodriguez Lopez. It's Club Deportivo Tenerife versus Real Zaragoza. Right, so to start with, we've got a, a, a revenge um, team talk, so that's what we're going to be doing. Motivation in. Bucket loads, so let's get into the game. Let's kick some ass. Come on, boys. Brand new start. Let's do Craig David Proud. He's bought the club. He's brought me in to do a job. Five-year plan. Let's see if we can start off with a win. It's a decent side rail, Zaragoza. I wouldn't say it's, uh, you know, it's it's an easy task to beat these, but we'll have to wait and see. We've got Sands. Square to it's probably just a false highlight. You never know. We are on the attack, it seems. And there we go. That'll be the end of the highlight, I would imagine. I actually realised that I forgot to go through the tactic. It's basically, if you saw, ooh, apparently, if you saw the, um, I don't even, I don't think I've se selected someone. But never mind. Uh, if you saw my life at Leeds, it's basically the same tactic at the minute. I've got a few different options. One with an advanced playmaker, one with a box to box instead of a central midfielder. Um, it's a four, four two four if you like, for the two inside forwards. Vitola does step up and puts it away. First goal of the series. Nice one, Vitor. Look, look how angry he looks in that in that profile picture thing that he's got. Yeah, he just steps up, strikes it well and hard. So that was a pretty dull half, if I'm honest with you. And you know, it, that's all there's been. There's been a penalty. We're winning. I'm not complaining. Doing well. Uh, I've got to try and, and obviously there's the, the language barrier at the minute. I'm, I'm trying to tell them that I've got that, that I've got what it takes. That they've got what it takes. But they probably need to hear that I've got what it takes to wait and see but it is going to be the second half kicked off by Zaragoza. Right we've got his first highlight of the second half. It's corner, it's ended up with Casadeus. I'm telling you now I'm going to change that to Amadeus. All I can think of is that Blood Down Gang song. Which I know it's probably something else but yeah Zapata the guy highlighted at the beginning of the game cleared, clears it away. Right we've got Casadeus on the charge, it's tackled by Zapata, that man again. And then squares it to Ross. Roz. Let's play for Talanza. Square to Zapata. Now it's with Barrera. Or Barrera. Barrera. I can't, I can't speak. I, I, I'm, it's going to take some learning these, these pronunciations. Uh, Luis Fernandez finds Lanza. That's a pretty straightforward name to pronounce. Barrera. I think it is Barrera. Roz finds it. A delightful ball to Lanza. It's crossing first time. Luis Fernandez straight at Danny Hernandez. Come on. Right, we've got a free kick. He's got a few in pre-season. Ooh, Sands goes close. But no cigar. Right, I was just about to make a change, but there's a highlight. So let's see how this pans out. Vitolo trips it forward to dive for Walter Cas Casadeus. Can he uh, whip it in here? He can't. He can get tackled instead by Zapata, who seems to be like shit in the field at the minute. It's everywhere. That's Zalaya. Zalaya finds Lanza down the left-hand side. He knocks it forward. Uh, it should be easy for Lewis, and it is. And he played. Oh, what the hell happened there? I'm not complaining, but we're still on the ball. I actually expected a, a bit of a fail of the week there. Just plug my other, other uh, part of my uh, channel. If anyone wants to check it out, have a look at some fails, have a bit of a laugh. 
It's, uh, it's good fun to, uh, when I'm editing them. And now it's a Zumitra. Luis Fernandez finds Bambok. That's uh, a bit of a, a shock. Still to make a change. I can feel a goal coming up. Oh, maybe not. Right, let's make a change now after that. So there's two changes to be made. We've got Giovanni coming on for Raul de Tomas, who's had a relatively quiet game, but he wasn't fully fit anyway. We've got Juan Camaro coming on for Suzo, who's again been quiet. Sandy's going to be the captain, uh, taking over the band. Uh, see how we, how we get on after that. We've got a free kick here. We're going to find the net. We are. Irurita. It's a nice name. Uh, it's beaten by Sands. I was going to go into a bit of a tangent on something but never mind it's a free kick so I thought it could be a quick goal and indeed it was he did his best to save it but uh, yeah that's Robert Keane celebration I've got an instant highlight I was going to say uh, let us know what you think in the comments if you if you like this idea of uh, having Ray David take over as take over a club and uh, hire me as manager and Rita with a good, good save um, I don't know it's just I've been told I've got a half decent ish Impression of uh, the bus selector character from back in the day. A lot of people, particularly the younger audience, probably won't have a clue who I'm referencing at all. But uh, it was a really good show back in the day. Uh, Zumitra has a throw in, fans Benito. And that's Luis Fernandez crosses in towards the back post. It's a bit of a poor cross, really. No one challenging. I've got an instant highlight. It's wide to Luis, the right back. Got an option down the, down the line in Tyrone, which he finds. And now it's played forward towards Casadeus. Can he whip it in? He's gone towards the corner flag. He does cross in. It's uh, collected by Irurita. And he's going to roll it out to Zapata. Centre half. Vadaska knocks it long straight to Alberto. I'll take that all day long. That's Sands. Tries to find Tyrone. But it's a loose pass. But now it's Vitolo. He's coming forward. Finds Tyrone. Now it's Casadeus. Plays it through for Giovanni. He's put it just wide. What a chance. But yeah, it's good link-up play once again. There's another highlight now. Zumitra, it's all happening at the end of the game. Herrera lands it. Oh, it's got in. The, he's found the bottom right corner. It's 2-1. Time to make a change. Ch -ch 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 changes. Right, Brian Acosta, the Honduran player. And now one, one of two. It's similar rules to uh, the Italian league where you can only have two non-EU players in the, in the squad. We've only got one, which is Brian Acosta. He's going to come off from Vitolo, just to freshen things up. Sands is going to move across as the captain to ball winning midfielder. Let's see how they get on. But this is a bit of a poor goal to concede, in truth. But uh, nice quick passing, I suppose. Nice finish, wrong footed. Danny Hernandez has tried to save it with his collarbone, rather than go like that with his hand. But, you know, never mind. Each to their own. I'm not a goalkeeper, so I don't know how to go on. But anyway, Iriondo finds Acosta. Kamara. Chips it forward, it's a poor pass, and Bambok is on the ball now, finds Zapata. It's a good bit of a, a block there, but it's ended up with Luis Fernandez. Is this a chance to make it 2 2? Zumetra has a go, it's put it over the bar, and that leap from Madani Hernandez, the goalkeeper, was outstanding. Hernandez does find Iriondo from the short free, well, short issue free kick. There's a minute to go of this stoppage time. Acosta finds Casadeus. It's wide to Tyrone. He's got options to the right of him if he wants it, but instead he goes the other way. Now it's Luis. It was Giovanni who found him. It's a poor ball in. That'll probably do it. It's still 50 seconds, 40 seconds, something like that. Irurita, the goal kick, chips it across to Benito, the right back. Now it's Bambok, Zumitra on the ball, right hand side. It's tackled well. Now Kamara for stand ball to Giovanni. Plays it back to Kamara. Can he square it? He can. It's sweaty goal territory, but it's been cleared away by Subias. Good. Good defending in the end, but that will probably do it. End of the game there. Get off to a winning start in this new series. Can't be more chuffed than that, really. So I'm going to tell them that they did well. It wasn't an outstanding performance, but they did really well. Uh, no outstanding performers, really. No one but like no one hitting eight. Uh, pretty average game, if I'm honest with you. But yeah, we kind of edged it. I just see us in third place. Don't read too much into it. Um, but yeah, uh, last season Tenerife did actually finish in the in the playoffs, but they lost in the final to Levante. So never mind. Um, that's why that's why I'm here, according to Craig David. But never mind. So yeah, that is that's the start of this save. I'll just quickly run through the tactic now. Uh, complete win backs, normal central defenders, sweeper keeper as well, uh, ball winning midfielder with central midfielder. The other ones have got ball play. Uh, sorry box-to-box -box and one's advanced playmaker 
And then we've got Suzo, uh, sorry, in, inside forwards, left and right, false nine, and a complete forward up top. Um, seems to work seems to work quite well with Leeds, Leeds United when they got promoted on my life at Leeds save. Uh, I'm hoping it can have like a similar effect. Plus, based on the life at Leeds save, it provides us with lots of fails of the week. But whatever, whatever reason, there's a lot of goals. Half the time it's errors, and that's why I'm, I'm trying to stick with it. Just for this football manager, I'm going to try something new, I think, on FM18. So, coming back for the next game... Uh, the next live com. I'm not going to bother doing the cup games unless I get to like the quarterfinals or something like that. If we get to there, that stage, then I'll start to take it a bit serious. We're going to play quite a few games off camera, um, and I'm going to come back for this team because it's got a, a nice name. Albe Albekete Balompi, Balompi. It sounds like a nice like dessert or something, but you know, I'm going to come back for this game first of October. Play quite a few games off camera. Get us into the swing things, see whereabouts we are hanging about in the league, uh, and yeah, hopefully you can join us for that. So that is it, guys. Hopefully you have enjoyed this video. If you have, why not go ahead and press that like button? It'd be greatly appreciated. I'm about to go get legless with Craig David, and I'll join you next time for the next one against the unpronounceable name with the dessert-sounding ending. Until then, I'll see you then. Bye bye. <laughs>